one and all, and welcome to Lady Top Hat's High Horse! Today I'm going to be reviewing Thimbleweed Park! I know, I know, the last video I made was also a point-and-click adventure, and Thimbleweed Park is another point-and-click adventure. However, it was only just released. It was released on the 30th of March 2017. I know that everyone and their dog and their aunt's cat are reviewing this game at the moment. However, there will be no review quite like that of Lady Top Hat. Thimbleweed Park was published and developed by Terrible Toy Box, which is code for Ron Gilbert. Ron Gilbert fans will know this name from Monkey Island, Secret of Monkey Island, The Cave, not to mention some other titles. And there are certainly hints of those games in this one. Lots and lots of references to previous Ron Gilbert games. And I must admit that I was never a big fan of those games. And I only knew about Thimbleweed Park because Sir Top Hat gifted it to me. He is, as you all know, a huge Monkey Island fan. And that's where he cut his teeth in gaming, as it were. However, I began playing this damn game and it got me. It sucked me in with its clever storyline and its challenging puzzles. How dare you, Ron? How dare you? So I was forced to play this game and thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> so, Thimbleweed Park is a classic point and clicker adventure, and just as in the Monkey Island games, after a certain amount of gameplay, a larger map appears and is given to you as the uh, human overlord, and you can direct the characters to different locations on the map. However, there is one point upon which I cannot compromise, and therefore I need to get on my high horse. Dear game developers, it is 2017. We have all of the computing power of the modern world at our fingertips. So why, why, why are you releasing games with pixel graphics? Pixel graphics are the bane of humanity. It disgusts me that with all of our capability, with games like The Witcher and even the mods capable on Skyrim, that games are still being released with pixel graphics. I hate it. And don't come at me like this game is set in 1987. This game needs to have the old style graphics to make it immersible. Rubbish! No one ever became immersed in pixel graphics. And if you did, then you're a pixelated person. I shall get down off my high horse now. And we can commence with the scoring of Thimbleweed Park. The scoring commences through nine categories and it is possible to reach a maximum of three points in each category. So there are 27 points up for grabs. If in a certain category the game is shockingly substandard, it will get zero points. The first category is playable female characters. Thimbleweed Park actually has five playable characters in the game, which I think is splendid, especially for a point and click. Two of those five are female, and they are called Angela Ray and Dolores Edmund. So with more than one female character, this is the April Ryan level, and Thimbleweed Park scores Two points! The second category is story. Thimbleweed Park is the name of the town, Thimbleweed. There are the five characters who run around the town trying to solve a murder mystery. The murder happens within the first minute of gameplay. The 
rest of the game is about solving that murder. Play switches frequently between all five characters, and in fact, different characters are needed to operate certain things. So certain characters can only interact with certain items. Very nice mechanic. Very well done. Definitely approve. The story itself unfolds in quite an unexpected fashion, and the ending, depending on your depending on your opinion, could be seen as quite sad. However, it's exceptionally clever, and therefore I award this the Mass Effect story level and give it another two points. The third category is Challenge. Now there are two modes you can play in, Normal and Hard. You can play the entire game without using a walkthrough. Most of the puzzles and uh, ways to interact with the items are reasonably logical. It's more or less what you would do in real life, putting coins into a telephone box, that kind of thing. Of course, when you're playing as the ghost, you get some extra powers and abilities, which is quite fun. And very similar to real life there. <laughs> So, without needing to consult the walkthrough, I would say that the challenge level comes in at the Pac-Man level and scores one point. Category number four is Music Score. As with most point-and-click adventures, there is a, a song ditty for most scenes. There are an awful lot of scenes in this game. I would probably be making it up if I said a hundred, but it's a lot. And each one has its own signature music piece, which is good. This is what we expect. And therefore, I rate this at level two, which is the jazz band. Duke Ellington sporting his top hat there. We give this a level two. Category five is graphics. As you've already heard, this is a definite to topic to get me very... <laughs> get me on my high horse! Pixel graphics! <sighs> this comes in at the pixel graphics level and scores one measly point. At least they made an effort. At least you made an effort. It wasn't text-based. That would be the ultimate. Oof. Category number six is cost. Currently, Thimble Park is $20 on Steam. I think that's a little too much. I understand it's a new release, so it's going to be full price for a while. If you're a fan of point and clicks, or indeed a fan of the Ron Gilbert adventures, then you're going to love it, and you may want to pay the full price. However, if you're just curious and would like to have it for your collection, then I recommend waiting for the Steam sale. In this case, I think the game's a bit too much. Only the Queen is able to afford this game, and therefore it scores just the one point. Category 7 is Distribution Platform. Here, the developers have done an excellent job. Not only is the game available on Windows, Linux, and potato boxes, but it's also available on Android, so you can even play on your handheld. Golly, the wonders that there are in the modern world. On Steam, it has full trading cards and achievements, and therefore, it gets the full three points. Category eight is Top Hats. I am exceedingly distressed to report that there are no Top Hats in this game. There is a pirate hat. And if you play on hard level, the pirate hat becomes an aluminium covered pirate hat. However, there is no top hat. And therefore, you are awarded the cloth cap of zero. Category nine is horses. There were no horses in this game either. It's quite tragic. Where are the standards of today, I ask you? Where are they? Where are the standards? <laughs> Have they gone? 
In Thimbleweed Park, there are rats, a hamster, several action figures, a ghost, but no horses. So there we are. That's the end of the scoring. Thimbleweed Park scores an incredible 12 points. Congratulations. If you like my unique way of reviewing games, then you may like the Tally Ho Steam Group, run by yours truly. There I review games quite regularly, and you'll find the Thimbleweed Park review there too. All that's left for me to do is to thank my lovely patrons being displayed and honoured here in Patron Gallery. Behind me is Zalrock Chaos, Ledger Balance, Lasko, Datchet, and Resherenborn. Thank you, fine gentlemen, for your continued support of this channel. For now, I bid everyone a fond farewell. Tally ho!